experience a grand life. Did you know that in the United States alone, 2.4 million kids are being raised by their grandparents or other family members other than mom or dad? 2.4 million. It's a Grand Life is a podcast for those grandparents and kinship caregivers who are committed to making a difference for those kids. Grand families are in every neighborhood, every city, tribe, and territory nationwide. If this is you or someone you love, this podcast is for you. Our goal is to offer hope and resources to help you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us wherever you get your audio podcasts and leave a review. Every new subscriber and review helps us reach others that need assistance. Welcome to another episode of It's a Grand Life. Hello, my name is Craig Nash. You're going to love our guest today on It's a Grand Life. We've got Cindy Pettit from Neighborhood House of Rochester Hills. And they do a lot of work with grand families here in Michigan. And that what is amazing uh, that uh, Cindy and I were talking about before we, we turned the recording on, it's amazing that we're talking about Oakland County. And for those of you across the country, Oakland County at one time was in the top 10 as far as wealthiest counties in the country. And we have seen that slip over the past number of years. But Cindy, first of all, thank you so much for being our guest here on It's a Grand Life. We're dying to hear about Neighborhood House how you guys started back in 1968 and how you keep innovating. But uh, thanks so much for being our guest. You are so welcome. It is such a pleasure to be here. Well, tell us about the visionary folks that started this outstanding organization called Neighborhood House. At the time, I would imagine it was when Oakland County was one of the wealthiest counties in the country. But you've started this, this mission and you continue to expand and grow. So. Why don't you give us an overview of, of this wonderful ministry? Sure. Originally, it was not a nonprofit. It was churches in our area that pulled together, knew that there was some issue with families struggling and wanted to figure out how they could help. So they started out with a small food pantry that sat in the, the basement of the First Congregational Church and tried to serve as many families as they could. Um, and then they started a closed closet, same thing. It was in the church in a little closet, but families experiencing some hardship could come and, and help themselves to some clothing. And since then it has just grown into a full-fledged social service nonprofit agency. And, um, you know, we, we do service a, a five municipalities we were you know we call ourselves pretty small because in the grand scheme of things we are but we service um auburn hills rochester rochester hills oakland township and addison township and we are very proud of our organization we have 22 employees but only three full-time so okay. everyone else is just part-time um, doing their jobs and helping people in our communities. And uh, the interesting thing about the folks that the, the areas that you kind of specialize in, that's not Pontiac, mm -mm. that's not Detroit, it's nope. not Ypsilanti. Correct. Uh, it is um, right next to some of the wealthiest parts of our community. Correct. And yet the, the need from your web website, which is beautifully done, it, it just it really identifies that this is a problem that can touch poverty is a problem that can touch all of us and quickly. Absolutely. One of the things that we had our attention drawn to over the past few years is, you know, the, we, we are well aware of what the poverty levels are that the government deems, you know, appropriate, but there's always going to be that group of people who are working but living paycheck to paycheck, they're not in poverty, but that one thing that happens in their life triggers the dominoes and suddenly they are struggling and absolutely don't know how to make ends meet. So that's where we try to fill the void, both with people in poverty, but as well as that group of people that experience hardships that they're not expecting. And I don't know if you would like me to do an overview now. Sure, or absolutely. Yeah, because 
it's a very broad organization as far as it what is. you all do. We like to consider ourselves an organization that has wraparound services. So we try to touch on all of the basic needs of the individual. So we provide a food pantry that is set up like a market. It, we're very, very lucky that we have people in our area that really support our mission and donate regularly. The food pantry is always well stocked. Our clients can come once a month and shop and they get about two weeks worth of groceries. So we supplement their monthly food, you know, with about two weeks worth of, of free food. We also have a clothes closet, which is also a thrift store, by the way, which we're, we're sort of marketing that more this year because our thrift store is what helps keep that building moving along. The money right. we make on that goes right back into supporting that building. Um, but they, we, we have a thrift, it's a thrift store, but we also have, um, free clothing for our neighbors that are clients of ours. So once every other month, they can go to the clothes closet and, and pretty much pick up a lot of clothing. We also have small appliance, small, small kitchen appliances, dishes, silverware, you know, things like that, that everybody needs. Yep. Bed spread, sheets, towels, pillows, that type of thing. We also have a licensed therapist that works with us that will see clients once a week that just needs some additional e emotional support. That's that she doesn't diagnose, she doesn't, you know, she just offers up a, a, a shoulder and an ear and just kind of helps people through that emotional crisis that they happen to be going through. We also have a van, which we are just so lucky to have that had, has been donated to us. And we offer the service of getting our clients to medical appointments and social service appointments during the month. We That's also, a, oh, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You, yeah, well, the one thing that I'm also very proud of is that we also have a program called Strive to Thrive. And what that provides our clients is one-on-one -on -one coaching by a case manager. So they're, they're assigned a case manager. And through that program, we provide budget counseling, career coaching. We have an employment initiative program, which we can dive a little deeper with the client to try to get them educated or certified so that they can get to work. We also offer classes. We have a financial focus class. So the whole thing really revolves around managing money, budget, making sure that your income is more than your spending, you know, and our goal is to help those folks walk, you know, walk themselves back to self-sustainability. So you want them to be on their own to be Correct. charged as clients. You know, that yeah. the goal is love you, man, but we don't want to see you again. We want you to yeah. be self-sustaining and taking care of the kids and everything else. Right. And, and right. do you see a lot of that self-sustainability with your clients? Well, we, the, the case management strive to thrive program kicks in when clients come to us and they literally can't pay their bills. You know, they're at that point. A lot of our clients really come just for the supplemental food and clothes and that type of thing that just helps get them through, you know, the, the month that some of our, a lot of our clients we know are on a fixed income. Right. Right. So they're, they're probably not going to get to complete self sustainability without a little bit of assistance. The other thing we do is try to connect them with as many resources as we can. So we have people on site that can sort of nav navigate the DHS system and help get them set up with, you know, those types of resources. So we, we know there's going to be some clients that may need to stick around and need our help pretty consistently, but the folks who are really going through that financial crisis, 
those are the folks that we get into the Strive to Thrive program to work one-on-one -on -one with them. That, that just sounds absolutely terrific. And um, as we're talking here, I'm just wondering, how did uh, Neighborhood House fare during COVID? Did that affect you guys? It did. It did. We, you know, we had to really watch it, but we were very, very fortunate to get several grants, federal and state, that helped us stay in line with what we wanted to be able to accomplish with our clients. But, you know, it was odd, but not odd, but, you know, with a lot of the clients were afraid to come to our, you know, oh, our building right. and to the food pantry. But, you know, for instance, at the food pantry, we pivoted to a curbside um, up, process. Right. So they never had to leave their car. So that made a big difference. Yes. But at the closed closet in here, you know, we did see a significant decline in foot traffic and how many people were willing to come into the building and whatnot. Yeah, I, that makes a lot of sense. And and uh, well, what about the, uh, uh, what would you say keeps your staff of 22 motivated during this? I mean, is it seeing folks that make progress and then they, they, they graduate, if you will, for lack of a better term? Is, is that, uh, and, and do you have any stories of folks where you, you can say, boy, the, the Jones family really turned it around and, and we're just so proud of them and, and. Uh, yeah, we do. We call those our success stories. Yep. Um, and you know, some of them are big and some of them are small, you know, even I say to my case managers, their job is definitely the most emotionally draining job of all. Oh, um, it is hard. Yes. And I tell them all the time that you don't have to wait until a person is sustainable before you tell me about the success because all the little steps they're taking along the way are successes. Right. And even if they don't reach the end, what we have been able to accomplish with them during that two weeks, four weeks, however long it is, is a success. So I just keep that in the back of everybody's mind. But when we have a big success, it is it is a wonderful thing. And we try to put those on the website. We, we use those success stories in our marketing materials and in our, um, you know, when we send out flyers asking for donations and whatnot, you know, we try to include some of that so folks see the result of everything that they're helping us accomplish. Yeah, that, that's so important. And of course, you know, Cindy, our focus here at It's a Grand Life is on grand families, grandparents who are raising yep. their grandkids or kinship caregivers, relatives who are raising uh, relatives. And I would imagine you have several grand families as part of your clients, right? We do. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing it more often, actually. Um, and this is a great conversation for us to have because we know what we can do, but your podcast provides that sort of oversight on resources and your journey, right? Like right. what you experienced and how you found assistance. And I am going to start advertising that and have already to anyone that comes in and lets us know that that's happening to them. That's great. We. We're always trying to find folks uh, like Neighborhood House or ent entities like that that we can pass on to our grand families, and and we're and we're encouraging our listeners who are out state because we've got an um, audience all over the country now because there's unfortunately there's grand families everywhere and it is yeah. escalating like crazy and it, it doesn't surprise me that you're seeing more of us in your uh, various uh, services because mm -hmm. you know with uh, all of the the, with the additional poverty and with the behavioral health crisis that's going on, the fentanyl crisis that's happening. Yeah. Um, there, unfortunately, grand families are popping up everywhere, but uh, we're so thankful for the work that you do here in Oakland County. And I was just so blown away when you and I were on a Oakland County homelessness task force meeting, I think. And I said, in Rochester Hills, there's, there's a group called Neighborhood House. You've got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. But y'all are busy and you're helping oh, a lot busy. of folks. And 
Yeah, we currently have about 560 families enrolled that are what I call active. You know, they're here in and out of the food pantry and clothes closet and whatnot. But that equates to about 1,140 family members that we're supporting, you know, currently. Yeah. That does fluctuate and change, but um, but we're very we're very proud and we're trying this year to do better with marketing and letting people know we're here. Um, it's difficult sometimes with us because we are we only support those five municipalities. Right. So a lot of people, you know, we do get a lot of calls from Pontiac and we do get a lot of calls from Detroit or other counties even. Right. And it's difficult on our part because we have to say no, but um, but we always try to have lists of resources in other areas that we can provide them, you know, to help them get assistance. I mean, do you folks ever work with the folks at, at OLSA? What is it? Mm -hmm. um, OLSA, yeah. OLSA, oh, yeah. you're right. It's OLSA, really. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we do. At DHS, OLSA. Um, we have quite a few partnerships. Um, we work with OPC and with Auburn Hills Senior Center. Um, we we try to establish relationships with all of the local agencies that are assisting folks experiencing the same kind of crisis that, you know, our clients are. Now, you folks were initially started by seven churches that mm -hmm. came together in the uh, Northern Oakland County area where you- you In the Rochester area. Rochester actually. area. Yeah. Are the churches still involved? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we have partnerships with just, well, I shouldn't say just about every church because there are lots of churches, but we do have partnerships with many, many churches in our area. I, I think that's just so great because- They're that's, fabulous. Yeah, that that's really the whole idea behind churches. You know, help loving your neighbor. I think was one of the main um, tenets exactly. of exactly. Yeah, and that's what you and guys are doing. And it's so incredible too because they're they're really really getting involved. And we had a parishioner up at St Andrews that put together this program called um, Plus One, and what the program is they they keep a box in their next to the um, church and they're suggesting to everybody that attends St. Andrew when you go shopping every week just add one item to your bit basket and bring it and put it in box and it has and now other churches are doing the same thing and we're getting thousands of pounds of extra food because of that because of one item because and of one item. What I'm hoping from our uh, time today, as Cindy Pettit, is that folks across the country will say, gosh, if those seven churches could pull this together and do it, why can't we do it at our church? Yeah. And you, you just made something so simple, be, have such a profound impact on what you're doing. Just one additional can every time you go to the store. And yeah. and, and and you've got a, a, a church of 100 members, that's 100 cans a week. Exactly. It's and there's a lot of churches with more than 100 members, but yes. But if, if each one could do a little part, you, we could have a lot of these neighborhood houses all over the country. Yeah. And make a and huge And I will difference. share processes and procedures and, you know, anything that I have, I would gladly share with any community that wants to try to start something like this. That is, that is so great. So you, you're not worried about proprietary information. Oh my here. gosh, no. No, we, no. <laughs> we want to get the word out as soon as possible and, yes. and, and to as many folks as possible. So yeah. that's absolutely terrific. So where, where do you see the future of Neighborhood House? Well, I think, you know, honestly, we're still I hate to say it, but post COVID, like we're, we're still trying to gain a little bit of momentum since, you know, that whole two years that was a struggle for everybody. But, you know, I think that we're always year after year when we sit to do our planning and our budget, we're always open-minded to ideas of 
adding services and we do have special programs we do constantly we we're, we have a bike program right now where we're giving bikes away to families you know so we're always thinking of things like that that we can can do but in the foreseeable future i think we're just going to probably focus on the services we're providing and what can we do in that realm okay. to make it easier and better for everyone in the community. So you, you folks and, and you're with your board of directors, you've identified the core services that are really lacking in your service area and mm -hmm. you want to focus on that. I mean, we're yeah. you're, you're not going to get into automotive repair for a, a low income <laughs> folks or anything like that. Well, or... we do have, if you're part of the Strive to Thrive program, we do have um, grants available to okay. help pay for certain things. Car repair is one of them. If you are working or have a very, a serious need, like have to be, you know, dialysis three times a week or your child right. is disabled, we will help pay for a car repair. Shelter, we help pay for car repair and utilities. Those are the three things that we can assist with, but only if you're working with a case manager and in that Strive to Thrive program. That, that just sounds absolutely great. Did, do you ever work with the folks at uh, FaithWorks? At, uh, from, oh, yeah, yeah, all the time. We meet with them, I think, once a week or once every other week to, to keep on track of who's doing what and how many of our clients are in their wheelhouse. And uh, uh, for folks that, that maybe not be aware, they help a lot with the uh, um, what with ramps, handicap ramps and whatnot mm -hmm. for families and do some the, the renovation of or remodeling of, of folks houses if they're low income and need some help. And mm -hmm. and uh, we're getting ready to have them on. It's a grand life. A couple of nice. my my good friends are involved with that wonderful good. work. And and they're uh, wow. that's another thing. A, a group of guys got together and said, how can we make a difference? And exactly. Born and and it sounds like the seven pastors from those churches got together in the 60s and said, how can we make this work? So yep. We, um, uh, if, if someone is listening and they're in the Northern Oakland County area here in Michigan and they meet the criteria for uh, uh, needing, getting support, how should they contact you or, or who would they contact at Neighborhood Services? Neighborhood I think the best thing for them to do before they make a trip here is to contact our front desk for, okay. you know, to just say, I'm interested. What does it take? Am I eligible? And the number here is 248-651. 5836. 651-5836. Yep. All right. And that that sounds like a great idea. And it sounds like just a great program that you folks have put together. And and uh, we are just going to salute you as you uh, continue to strive for the next 50 years of service to the community. And, and uh, you're really leading by example. And hopefully... Uh, we can see these little franchises pop up all over the country because uh, there are, I'm part of a group called Generations United that has 86 grand voices or folks representing grand families all over the country. Nice. And if I could get my colleagues to be aware of the wonderful work that y'all are doing, it'd be, be nice to see one of these uh, all over this great country. But thank you so much, Cindy Pettit, for your time today, for the wonderful work you're doing. And um, I would just uh, congratulate your board of directors and all your folks on uh, continuing to uh, um, carry the torch for folks that are hurting, whether it's short term or long term. We really appreciate what you're doing. And thanks so much for being our guest here on It's a Grand Life. Thank you so much. And if anyone does reach out to you in regard to the program itself, um, feel free to share my email. I will share any experience or knowledge that I have with anyone who's interested. Well, what will probably happen is that your information will be at the bottom of the screen when we put this, uh, get this, oh, okay. get this edited and published. So anybody can reach out to you or your wonderful teammates, but uh, just uh, that's why I'm so glad we could take the time to get together. Cause I was so intrigued when we were on that task force and I said, I don't know anything about this neighborhood house and they've been around <laughs> forever. So <laughs> Thanks yep. again, and keep us posted on any changes at Neighborhood House. I will do we'll that. Keep our audience aware. So, thank you so much. You bet. Have a great rest of your day, and, and we'll keep our eyes on the Neighborhood House and the continued growth. Thank you for joining us today for It's a Grand Life. It's a Grand Life provides vital content, regulatory updates, and subject matter experts that are committed to supporting the 2.4 million kids 
and their caregivers from every neighborhood, every city, every tribe and territory nationwide. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts and leave a review. Every new subscriber and review helps us reach others that need assistance. As caregivers, we are united in purpose. We are driven by hope while providing strength for today and hope for tomorrow. We are truly making a difference in while living the grand life. If you have a suggestion for a future episode, please reach out to us. But we'll see you next time for another It's a Grand Life. Thank you for joining us.